Hi, this is Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and this is Florida Natural Farming. Today I'm going to do a video on uh, probiotics and prebiotics for the soil, for soil health. And I'm going to go look at some garcinias to see the flowering status and probably look at some star apples and canistels and some other fruit trees. And anyway, here we go. So I was watching this uh, YouTube video by Zoe, Z-O-E, and it was on uh, inflammation is the root cause of the root cause of uh, death. And I was listening to it and it was very interesting, uh, kind of well-known information, but I always like to hear the way that different people like to uh, explain it. And basically uh, it was up by the leading gut doctor and a nutritionist, I think, um, the leading gut doctor uh, saying that uh, gut health is uh, the way you fix inflammation and it's the root cause of inflammation. And I was, while I was listening to it, I was thinking, Boy, you could re replace the word inflammation with edaphic stress or soil stress. So uh, every time they said inflammation, I thought soil stress. And then replacing sugars and uh, processed foods with uh, chemicals and um, or management practice. So uh, synthetic chemicals or uh, fungicides or herbicides or pesticides and mowing causing causing cancers because uh, um, they you know in the place of uh, 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 processed foods because that causes uh, uh, inflammation so so does chemicals and um, management practice and causes edaphic stress so soil stress and then uh, in the place of uh, uh, probiotics and um, whole foods and prebiotics uh, I uh, replaced in my head um, uh, while they're talking uh, with uh, uh, manures and compost and uh, plant um, uh, fiber you know like hay or wood chips and you say so you could really replace their talk on gut health that causes inflammation could uh, very well have been a, uh, a, uh, a uh, lecture on plant, pro, grow, pro plant health and soil health. Uh, just by uh, mentally interchanging those words. So it just really fascinated me. And it, you know, the root cause of, or the, the way that you can heal uh, inflammation in people is dependent on how the plant is being grown. And it turns out that um, compaction, so mowing the, the lawn and hum, human interaction with the soil uh, causes soil stress or inflammation to the soil. And uh, I was just like blown away that it was so connected and it, basically the same thing. Uh, just that uh, prebiotics is like hot hay and uh, plant uh, inputs like chop and drop or um, uh, wood chips. Um, I believe that hay is probably the best uh, prebiotic uh, you could use to feed your soil because it breaks down so easily so you really want it to turn over really quick and when you use hay and then you add a probiotic like manure I have some places say that manure is a cow manure cow, cow dung not all probiotics are the same when it comes to soil so when you apply like EM or lactobacillus as you spray the hay, it breaks down really good. So you're adding a prebiotic and a probiotic. And then you end up with a postbiotic, which is full of uh, uh, metabolizing compounds, uh, metabolites, phenolic compounds, and uh, biology 
and mineral uh, aspects of the soil that form aggregation and uh, if and you know pieces of fungi and pieces of plant carbon so it's got prebiotics probiotics and postbiotics all interconnected in that soil aggregate anyway it's just fascinating and um, uh, I found that uh, applying the cow manure boy these uh, rabbits and stuff have really been going at these uh, sugarcane in here um, I found that adding our uh, uh, our uh, uh, holistically raised miniature zebu uh, cow manure input with the the uh, you know the hay is a probiotic and a prebiotic applied at the same time and compost yeah it's great but it depends on how it's made and it depends on what's in it whether the quality is going to be that good and a lot of uh, schools teach that you don't want to apply raw manure because they're afraid of uh, E. coli in the soil or that transfers into the plants but that's because the way the cows are managed uh, in uh, inhumane allowed to be managed in inhumane uh, in an inhumane way that uh, creates the uh, overabundance of a uh, uh, microbe that's out of balance. So the homeostasis of the uh, uh, micro uh, microorganisms is out of balance because of the way this, the cow is being managed. So ours are managed holistically and whether how you raise the cows and where you get your manure from does matter so we don't use any minerals we follow a biodynamic farm standard we're not biodynamic anymore this is a fruiting uh garcinia uh humulus achachiro tree that i'm trying to i don't think it has any flowers on it but uh it's uh it's uh gonna fruit again this year i gave it two big piles of manure this one's got completely consumed rather quickly um, so I'm gonna do another one I've been getting lots of passion fruit and bananas here and the passion fruit is so good it's sweet even though it's a tart one it's a sweet and tart uh, perfect balance and I see there's some in here I don't really like this passion vine growing on my fruit trees um, I do try to uh, pull them off this Echichiro tree, but I like the passion fruit. It doesn't seem to bother it too much as long as I keep it uh, maintained. So this uh, sugar cane is a probiotic or a prebiotic. So it's, it's fiber for the soil. Um, <clears throat> and uh, pieces of fruit and all the exudates that go underground because we have a living orchard floor that's a prebiotic for the soil so it puts carbon and uh, feeds the microorganisms in the microbiome of the the, the root zone of the plant and um, uh, I like to learn a new word so these are my sugar apples I'm trying to think of it as I like uh, multitask and do this video at the same time and look at this sugar apple this is the Oscars giant purple seed grown a lot of our plants and trees fruit trees here we grow hundreds of different species of fruit trees um, we have about five four, four or five I think my pink uh, star apple died star apple not star fruit this is a, a chrysophyllum our uh, chrysophyllum kamito and the star apple it's oscar's giant purple so i got seeds from fruit lovers nursery i like his seeds uh, sometimes if you don't get your uh what you want you just have to contact him and he will take care of it um and anyway it's this tree is getting uh kind of big the trees in this area were very slow to grow because this was right in front of the house and it was a lawn and uh, when it rained there would be big uh, ponds in the lawn that would stay there and then in the summer it was like super hot the water would be like 100 degrees it felt like 100 degrees it's probably like 90 or the air temperature it was like hot bath water and um, killed everything in here so 
uh, I took a bunch of soil classes to try to figure out how to take care of the compaction. Compaction is, um, you know, that's, that's uh, 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 inflammation to the soil. Uh, the root cause of death inflammation and uh, the main cause of uh, death in humans is inflammation. So the main cause of death in plants is inflammation to the soil. So um, uh, I, you know, I learned that you have to let the roots grow out and you have to stay off the soil and you have to apply uh, a, a, like compost, which is a could be a probiotic or a prebiotic or both, um, depending on how uh, finished it is. And um, I believe that the the best the best uh, probiotic is the uh, raw miniature zebu manure. And a lot of people use earthworm castings because they have small yards; they can't get cattle and they want to do uh, worm farms. I'm not a big fan of the worm farm. They kind of gross me out, but, um, and you can get worms just by adding the prebiotic, the, the hay, the grass hay, uh, coastal Bermuda. It's very cheap from the feed store. They will deliver bales of hay to your house um, in Florida. And uh, you have to buy like a certain number, like five probably, and then pay a delivery fee. Maybe you don't even have to buy five, but they deliver it. And um, uh, you could store it in your garage and uh, it's, it like breaks down really quick. And then you could spray lab on top of it and put some earthworm castings in there. And when you put earthworm castings into that stuff, you're gonna have eggs in those earthworm castings. Make sure they're organic earthworm castings. Earthworm castings are a probiotic. So any manures are probiotic. So I had a, a sweet Vietnamese sweet pink uh, star apple here and the rabbits decided to come over here and really go at this little tree. Looks like it may have died. Uh, um, but, oh well, so that's, you know, you can't, you win some, you lose some. Uh, and uh, we don't have any standing water in this area because of how we've let the, the weeds and the plants grow and cover the soil. Um, and, uh, <coughs> it's, it's worked for us. Uh, a lot of people don't like it, but this is the best way to improve soil and to build soil. Uh, you can't build soil with comp applying compost or wood chips is not building soil and wood chips don't break down that quickly. I believe in applying wood inputs, but not to where they're out of balance. It's a, it's a balance and the balance needs to be a living tapestry of plants and then applying uh, probiotics and prebiotics. So prebiotics of wood chips, throwing scattering wood chips through there or you know, putting more around your tree or whatever, and then adding prebiotics. But if you have compacted soil, you can have nutrient lock because your soil is compacted underneath the uh, wood chips and the wood chips uh, cause carbonic acid, which raises the pH of the, when mixed with water, raises the pH of the soil in the top four inches, especially uh, to highly acidic and your, your plant cannot uptake calcium or nitrogen or uh, phosphorus or uh, lots of uh, macronutrients uh, that need to have a more alkaline uh, soil pH. But when you have a living root system in there and you've taken care of the compaction problem because it's growing well, you can tell it's being taken care of. It's been taken care of. And um, when you have the living roots in there, you don't have to worry about the soil pH. Uh, it takes care of itself and uh, it takes care of the compaction and uh, you can displace the weeds with something you like. A lot of people like perennial peanut. I don't suggest killing out the indigenous weeds because you want those, uh, what are they? The autochthonous at, 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 microbes. So the indigenous microbes that live in the uh, live, it lives in the weeds that nature put there. And you want to build the indigenous microbes, autochthonous microbes, new word. I like to new, learn a new soil-related word or plant-related word every day. 
and there's just so much and I try to remember them like a diff edaphic soil is soil stress and um, it's good for my mind it keeps me um, busy so you want to build the uh, the autochthonous microbes in your soil the indigenous microbes in your soil by adding probiotics because they feed on uh, uh, prebiotics because they feed on prebiotics and then when you add manures you're adding how is this a alochthonous microbes so microbes from that are not indigenous so you're adding both sets of microbes you want to build micro diversity and that's how you do it prebiotics probiotics uh, indigenous plants and then you could put your uh, pigeon, your perennial peanut in there and eventually it will overtake that but the the indigenous microbes will transfer to your per, per, perennial peanut and you also have the uh, nitrogen fixing bacteria that comes comes with uh, having the indigenous a lot uh, autochthonous microbes in the soil. So I have a little, uh, I put a pile of, this is our uh, prebiotic and probiotic that we apply. Um, here's another uh, Oscar's giant purple uh, seed grown uh, star, star apple, Kamito. And then uh, and most of our trees here are uh, seed grown trees. I like to direct sow seeds um, into the into the soil. So here's a DPI gold star apple and it's looking good finally. Took a while before it started looking good. Our soil is very nice here. It used to be white sand and now as you can see it is like a, the creatures have been rooting through this. This was a compost pile but you can see that the compost pile is like aggregated soil. Um, that's what happens when you apply a quality pr probiotic like uh, uh, grass-fed manure, grass-fed cow zebu manure, and then you get like a humus aggregation going on. If you're not getting aggregation, then your your soil uh, is not in balance. The, the soil microbes are not in balance, or the homeostasis is, is uh, of the microbes is uh, microbial homeostasis is not uh, is not achieved yet. So you need to like probably add uh, less nitrogen, so a lower nitrogen source. That's another thing about have, applying too much worm castings. They do have a higher nitrogen content, so you could put your, your microbial um, uh, homeostasis can become out of balance uh, from applying too much nitrogen and you won't get soil aggregation. Uh, but I think it takes a lot of worms. It's kind of hard to do that, uh, but it can be done if you have a small uh, yard and you keep, and you have a worm farm and you keep applying just that, um, and you're not applying enough uh, carbon and stuff to uh, keep everything in balance, and you don't have a living orchard floor. And um, here's another uh, star apple. This is uh, from Australia. This is uh, the uh, white star apple the juicy pearl uh mike tenery uh, probably the most knowledgeable uh person i've ever seen on tropical fruit trees out of australia uh not the most knowledgeable on how to grow naturally but he knows how to grow with a chemical um and he does understand natural farming a little bit but i don't feel like i've heard enough from him to to uh give a informed opinion on that but uh, I have never uh, gotten any uh, information on uh, natural farming through anything he's said. So, uh, but he does know a lot about tropical fruit trees, probably more than anybody I know. Uh, most of these growers, they grow using chemicals and chemicals cause... <clears throat> using chemicals to grow plants causes soil stress, edaphic stress. <clears throat> soil stress. And that uh, basically is inf inflammation of the soil. And when you uh, do that, you wind up with, uh, like we do in Florida, we have citrus that only, they should be living to 75 years and on average live 15 years now. That's caused by soil stress from uh, management, uh, mismanagement. So they mow the, the lawn, 
uh, as an orchard floor and then they spray herbicides around the tree because they think that plant roots compete with the tree for nutrients. Um, if your soil is compacted and you're applying nutrients and herbicides and pesticides, it's all running off into the lakes and that's how we've gotten to the point in Florida where we have the most polluted lakes, freshwater lakes in the nation. That is unacceptable, especially for a spot that could be the most uh, biodiverse uh, tropical fruit uh, super center, uh, naturally farmed super center in the world since we were once the most biodiverse spot in North America and easily we can grow any type of tropical fruit here, it seems, uh, if we focus on soil health. So this is a, uh, a Jocko Beach uh, Camito seed grown. Looks good. I figured they're getting real close to uh, uh, grow, uh, fruiting, uh, flowering. They have not flowered yet, uh, but they're getting there. Uh, so a way to speed up the, the what I've found, a way to speed up uh, plant growth because uh, we don't water things. We don't water. Uh, a water is a contributor to soil stress. So the only reason why people say you have to water in Florida, well, if you're growing on rocks like in South Miami or South uh, Florida, way South Florida, and it's just calcareous rock you're growing on, you might have to water until you get some uh, soil built up. But if you're growing on sand, like most of us are, then, and you're having to water, it's a management issue, and it's usually because you've applied uh, chemicals. And even though the universities all tell you and give you water recommendations, we have not watered anything, and we fruit cacao, seed-grown cacao, we don't provide any uh, cold uh, protection to it. We grow ginger uh, without ever watering it. We grow heliconias. Everything can grow without being watered because we focus on the soil health, the health of the soil. Uh, and if you're using chemicals, you have to apply uh, uh, water, otherwise your plant will die <clears throat> in drought situations. It'll burn the roots. That's why they tell you to do it. And all these, all these, uh, uh, people that give recommendations that uh, have the power to make changes to how people think, you know, schools and stuff. Uh, this is fungi grow that grows in our soil. The fungi are responsible for a major uh, part of soil aggregation. So if you're not getting fungi in your soil or you've applied copper fertilizers or sulfur or using chemicals that cause soil stress, a defect, a defect stress to the soil, then you're going to um, wind up with a, uh, a soil that does not have uh, enough fungi in it. Uh, a good fungi, bad fungi, they balance each other out and that's called homeostasis. So the microbes, the good and the bad uh, balance each other out and the good take over and create a soil that is plant beneficial, that encourages growth and suppresses uh, plant disease and pests. <clears throat> because the uh, chemicals that the plants exude in their roots contain, you know, they, the sugars that the plants exude also contain the secondary metabolites or the like polyphenols, which uh, are responsible for uh, dissolving uh, hard to break down um, carbons and stuff, or are a, uh, are a catalyst for enzymes to uh, promote growth in plants. So the soil aggregation becomes a uh, postbiotic uh, that contains prebiotics and probiotics that has uh, secondary metabolites or phytochemicals wrapped up in it. It's amazing. The whole system is amazing and it's finally been elucidated and thankfully I've, uh, I've been able to comprehend it somewhat. I'm still learning. I learn something new every freaking day. It's just the rate at which, the speed of which the, the knowledge on uh, natural farming and what's going on with the soil and how it's connected to our own gut health and our own uh, death rate and chronic disease and chronic inflammation um, is the same uh, as the chronic disease and inflammation that you find in plants, uh, fungal diseases and stuff. Because you really can't 
um, uh, focus on killing one particular fungi without killing all the fungi. And you need all the fungi to balance out your bad fungi in your mangoes. And why would you want to kill all the frogs and aquatic life with your sprays? I just am shocked that people are still polluting Florida with their chemicals, especially since it's, it's well, uh, well known now that that's the wrong way to grow plants. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it anymore. <clears throat> I have this keppel tree. I've always wanted to grow keppel tree. That's the, the, the tree. It's a little seed-grown tree. It's a tree that um, makes your uh, bodily excrement, your, you know, your uh, sweat, and your uh, body odor, and your manure uh, smell like uh, uh, flowers. Or flor it's floral. Um, my uh, durian's looking great. I mean, it just looks really good. There's no slowdown uh, for under 45 degrees uh, for, for our durian. It's because we have our, our soil. We've, I've been focusing on soil health here for eight years. And it pays off now. I can plant uh, pretty much anything in here, direct sowed seeds uh, into our system. And um, it, uh, like uh, Garcinia mangostana, will grow very quickly uh, from seed here. And my other mangosteens that I plant from seed will grow very quickly here. And all these rare tropical plants grow very well and don't need any uh, protection from the cold. The protection from the cold is the uh, all the uh, biology, all the, the, the diversity, all the plants, all the different diversity. It's not based on chemicals and uh, um, wind. It's based on the whole system. So you have to have uh, your plant in combination with other plants, with the native, uh, the uh, the uh, 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 microbes, the native microbes, with the alochthonous microbes, the imported microbes. So I have offered to sell miniature zebu manure to people via this channel, uh, a big box. Uh, ours are holistically grown zebu. We do not believe in applying or using um, uh, uh, mineral blocks and because it's not allowed in biodynamic farming so you have to rotationally graze I haven't seen anybody rotationally graze cows around here except for us and there's a lot of cows around here and uh, it's just kind of bizarre uh, today with what we know that nobody else does that around here and because we do that we don't have to use warmers and our cows are healthy and so I, I keep them on a pasture uh, for seven days and then I transfer them to a new pasture. I only have three pastures, but it has worked for us. And I lock them in at night because there are coyotes around here. And um, so I give them the coastal hay. And the coastal hay uh, is also uh, a, a great input uh, prebiotic that people can use in place of just pure wood chips. It's best to use a combination, um, not just wood chips. Uh, wood chips are great, but if you're using them as a mulch, you're killing all your autochthonous microbes, your indigenous microbes in the process. And all you're winding up with is uh, saprophytic uh, microbes that just break down carbon. And you need the plant beneficial microbes. You need the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the plant growth promoting fungi. You need the, you know, that live in the rhizosphere of the plants and live inside the plants. And uh, the endophytic microbes that grow inside the plants, which transfer from the living orchard floor into your fruit tree when you plant into the living orchard floor. So this is my little uh, uh, recently planted uh, direct zone seed of uh, uh, Garcinia mangostana, and it's more than uh, 15 inches tall in less than six months. And this is a uh, one that I just planted, a Garcinia uh, Amazonica gigantea uh, that's growing well. Uh, it was a gift from my friend Frank, 
I planted some uh, Platonia and Cygnus seeds around here, but I think that they were elderly, but I'm waiting for them to come up. Uh, kind of expensive seeds. I was hoping that I had a friend that would give me some, but they just don't seem to be able to share. Not my friend Frank, but uh, other friends. Some people like to just hoard all the plants themselves. I like to share stuff with people, and that's why I do these videos. Um, mango season's uh, coming on quick. So this is a Garcinia dolcis. Look at how nice that looks. These are our little uh, cacao uh, trinitoros. I think that might be a Criollo uh, cacao. We grow three different types. We do have fruiting cacao on our, uh, fruit on our cacao right now. I have about a hundred, uh, we have about a hundred little trees of varying sizes. And a way to speed up growth without watering isn't, you know, it is not by watering. Sure, you could speed up plant growth by watering, but you could also speed it up just as fast by applying hay with manure at a big pile of daily manure next to these trees. Uh, has shown that they they grow like twice as fast, just as fast as if you were watering them, and you don't even have to water. Um, there's a fine line between the amount of uh, input, uh, probiotics, manure inputs, and um, uh, uh, the nitrogen, because of the nitrogen uh, that you can apply. And Biodynamic Association, uh, their farm standard, only allows you to apply the maximum of 85 pounds of nitrogen per acre. Whereas like University of Florida recommendations would allow me to apply like up to more than 300 pounds of nitrogen per acre. We apply 29 pounds of nitrogen because we know that the living tapestry of orchard floor combined with the uh, microbes, autochthonous uh, microbes and the, the allochthonous microbes, the indigenous microbes and the imported microbes, which can blow in from the air, the imported ones, um, uh, provide a nitrogen fixing bacteria that uh, enables the plant to uh, find nitrogen on its own with the help of the microbes. But you have to have a living system. You can't have a dead, uh, highly inflamed system that you get with industrial farming and which everyone seems to grow. So a lot of uh, uh, studies have uh, shown that uh, fecal transplants, this is a seed grown, um, sugarloaf mango that I, I keep hoping that if this is its year it's going to um, uh, bloom. Uh, 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 fecal transplants in, in mice, they do studies on mice, but I, I believe they're doing them on humans too, have been shown to fix people's uh, health issues. So mice that are like uh, oh, uh, skinny, they give them a fat mouse, an obese mouse a fecal transplant and the skinny mouse becomes obese. So uh, uh, when you have a plant that you buy from a nursery and you want to do something that's akin to a fecal transplant for your plant is this is what we do. We take the plant from the nursery. We remove all the soil. If the soil does not come off easily, we soak it in rainwater until they wash out easily. I rinse them out. And then I put a hole and I put it directly in the soil, bare root, and then I close the hole up and walk away. I don't water anything when I plant. I've never had to. None of these plants have ever been watered when I plant. Sure, I've cheated on maybe a few, but um, uh, I can probably count those plants on like one hand. And even during drought, you don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry. So I, I put, uh, I planted some of those, uh, <clears throat> those uh, puturia, uh, you know, they're the, uh, the egg fruit type plant, but they're like a white flesh puturia called bone shell. Uh, supposedly a newly discovered uh, variety from the Amazon and, you know, We've always ignored indigenous knowledge in the U.S. We don't, you know, when we give recommendations on how to grow cacao, even though they've been growing it indigenously for 5,000 years successfully, we ignore all that information and we come up with our own recommendations of chemical-based uh, fertilizers that uh, 
cause edaphic stress to the soil and in turn cause plant disease and pest issues, which in turn requires the use of fungicides, herbicides, and pesticides, and a constant temperature uh, for that plant uh, that can't handle any abiotic stress because our soils are so stressed out from our management practice. <clears throat> but since we follow indigenous uh, farming methods, we incorporate uh, all regenerative farm practices into our, our own farm system here, Florida Natural Farming System. Uh, uh, it's not copied identical. No two farms should ever be identical. They're, they can't be. And, um, and that's why we have such success and are able to grow in fruit cacao even when the temperature drops to 31 degrees. So the temperature was below 45 here. And a lot of people think that the, the, the cacao tree will die and it will drop all its leaves and it will not be able to hold fruit. But um, yes, the, it, that's because you uh, are causing your soils to become inflamed or highly stressed due to industrial farming methods that are taught by uh, modern ag schools <clears throat> here in Florida and pushed by people online. Whole chemical form of farming is uh, uh, quickly becoming uh, an embarrassment, I think. Uh, embarrassment and has destroyed, it's, it's almost destroyed Florida. Uh, we shouldn't have such polluted lakes I think I, I looked at a study on uh, pollution in like a lake around uh, Sebring or something or Avon and uh, uh, and it had like 12 different uh, pesticides and I think 11 of them were herbicides. Uh, herbicides are a pesticide in it and they were in a lot of them were in quantities higher than is recommended by a uh, the, by the uh, EPA. EPA is a worthless institution that uh, uh, should have been something good, but it's like, it's bought and paid for, for like most things here in uh, America. I hate to say that, but that's how it is. This is a bread nut tree. And this little spots, that's from the cold, but it didn't, this new growth did not die on it. It's still growing. That's an, the leaf is, is fine. But they get those little spots when it's suffering cold damage. That's why I know my uh, durian can handle the temperatures below 41 degrees. Um, the transfer of the autochthonous microbes that are enable plants to handle cold weather transfer into the uh, inside of the tissue of the uh, plant that you plant, like the durian, into the soil when you do a a, 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 a fecal transplant or a plant soil transplant, which is what you do when you plant them bare root. And then the microbes can quickly colonize the roots because the roots are exudating stuff. When you have the old soil in there that has chemicals in it, then the uh, uh, autochthonous indigenous microbes that are gonna enable that plant to withstand uh, abiotic stress, they're not able to transfer to the plant that you're putting in there. and uh, if it has uh, salt-based fertilizers, which they all do from the nursery, then the plant will die during times of drought and uh, not be able to survive. So here's my... Um, uh, this is a, a Garcinia. So we started this farm to grow achachira trees. So we have about 500 achachira trees, all dry farmed, all growing naturally, no problem. Um, and uh, they do it just fine, full sun, shade, whatever. They grow in all conditions, but you have to focus on soil health. Uh, I meant to mention that, yeah, I tried to sell uh, manure online here. $20 for a big box, a U.S. postal box, a priority mail I could send of our holistically grown manure, and it's a probiotic. One box should probably do you for a long time, and uh, you can also buy uh, probiotics uh, from uh, Josephine Porter Institute. They sell BD500. It's a very good uh, product uh, that, that uh, does build soil. Uh, other probiotics are uh, soil humus. Um, 
Uh, and then you could just multiply them by growing them and adding them to uh, uh, some hay that you purchased. Uh, not so much wood chips, they take too long to break down. Some wood chips, pine shavings would be better, they're more broken down already, but um, uh, hay, hay is very quick. That's one straw revolution. You know, we combine all forms of regenerative agriculture, modify them, and turn them into our own uh, farm plan. Uh, they're similar, just like we, uh, probably our biggest influence is Indian zero budget natural farming, and that's why we have the miniature zebu, because they have been found, shown to have the higher concentration of uh, uh, biology in their gut uh, microbiota, but Unfortunately, we grow cows in the U.S. Uh, not in a holistic manner, meaning we worm them and kill off gut bacteria and make the, the, the animal uh, inflamed uh, where we, when we should only have to rotationally graze them and focus on clean water and uh, a good clean grass. That's all they get is grass. <clears throat> uh, I, well... I make some, my partner makes some uh, muffins out of uh, our Moringa and we give them one of those a day because they like them. They're kind of like the, uh, they're all made from grass though. It's uh, rye flour and I think he uses felt rye and some other flour um, and uh, then Moringa uh, powder and uh, makes muffins, little muffins and he feed, we feed one a day. They love them. Um, so here's a... So I'd also sell little bags of soil. I don't. I haven't really perfected how much. Uh, nobody's going to buy any because nobody ever does. But uh, it's no big deal. I just want to put it out there in case somebody actually can hear uh, and needs to add uh, a probiotic to their uh, mix of compost that they're making at home, which everyone should be doing. Um, so I could sell a little bag of aggregated soil, a tiny little bag, probably for like. 10 bucks and then you have to pay for shipping, but shipping shouldn't be too expensive. I haven't figured out a price. It's not a big, huge bag, but you only need a little bit, you know, a tablespoon. Tablespoon for an acre, probably. <clears throat> and you multiply it, you add it to your hay. And don't water the hay, let the rain do it. Your water's polluted, probably. I hate to say that. So this is a, uh, a, uh, a Garcinia hombromiana that has red flowers on it, and it is starting to flower. And um, it's uh, when it starts leafing out, it starts flowering, and it flowers at the tips, unlike uh, Achachiro. And uh, we have about 15 different types of Garcinias. This is a little uh, Garcinia madruno tree I planted here. I think that's one also. And then I also have a Garcinia mac magnifolia and a Garcinia macrophylla seedlings I started here. Um, they're doing good. Uh, I found that Garcinia, once they, uh, so this little uh, bread nut tree, it did not like the cold, but I see it's got a new leaf coming out. Um, bread nut seems ultra sensitive to uh, cold, <clears throat> much like soursop. But some of them don't have any cold damage, depending on how much biology is in the soil where they're at. This is a egg fruit tree. This is a little citrus tree. This is a little Garcinia uh, lindero. Uh, this is an oil nut tree from India. Indian zero budget is the biggest influence on us. Uh, they have panchagava recipes that they use in Ayurvedic medicine, but they use them for the soil. So the recipe is made from cows, milk, uh, ghee, butter, and uh, manure, and urine, and uh, carbon, like uh, uh, different recipes they do. Um, basically, all we do is the, the daily manure, and I used to do all the compost uh, applications that they made you do in biodynamic, but I feel that's totally unnecessary. They don't really they don't really know the best way to make compost. It was supposedly the Johnson Sioux method where you take a compost. It's not even touching the ground, which right there is, is wrong for me. Compost has to touch the ground. And then they, they, it's above the ground and then they wrap it in shade cloth. Well, that's adding microplastics directly into your compost, which is a big turnoff to me. So that is wrong. I do not recommend anybody using any plastic 
on their soil and even plastic in pots for plants transfers to the root zone of the plant so the postbiotics and the prebiotics they colonize the root tips of the plants and also when you use plastics that colonizes the root zone of the plants and prevents the plants from being able to uptake water well that's the, the nutrient cycle the water cycle is the nutrients nutrients move through the water so if you're doing that your plant your soil in your pot is highly inflamed especially if you're using uh synthetic fertilizers and uh copper fungicides and stuff like that so it's it's like you got to do a, a soil transplant a fecal plant transplant on your plant before you plant it otherwise it's always going to suffer if you try to grow indigenously like this. This is a Garcinia madruno. And this thing has been producing so much fruit. It's got new uh, uh, leaves on it, so I'm thinking it's gonna start flowering again. It has not stopped fruiting all, all year. It's given me fruits nonstop. I'm trying to see if there's any fruit left on it. I've recently got the last one, I thought, but I've been mistaken and it's a very easy to grow tree and I grew this in full sense started uh, fruiting it like two feet tall it's a very tiny tree there's an achachiro I was getting uh, that black fungal issues on my plants but uh, it's uh, it stopped didn't have to spray anything just focus on soil health and it's gone away so um, you will see uh, fungal issues periodically but Rather than uh, uh, get an uh, industrial uh, fix for it that kills all uh, uh, downstream biology, uh, that the downstream biology that's plant beneficial, um, you just have to add prebiotics, basically, and probiotics at the same time, uh, manure and... Uh, some carbon, some, 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 some hay that breaks down quickly. Uh, ours has uh, urine in it, which I believe is very beneficial. <clears throat> so this is a Garcinia uh, brasiliensis, and it's got fruit on it, and uh, not a lot, but usually has quite a bit of fruit all the time, and I gave it a pile of manure because I, I needed its fertilizing, and this is garden... Gardneriana, it looks a lot like a Dubico, but Dubico looks a lot like Garcinia macrophylla, which is the same type of uh, beaked uh, fruit, but it's larger. Uh, macrophylla is supposed to be the best tasting, um, Garcinia macrophylla is supposed to be the best tasting Garcinia out there. Um, this is a Garcinia hombromiana female tree that I saw a flower on, I still see a flower on. I'm hoping that it's like gonna open. I'm not sure if this is a, gonna be a perfect flower. It's getting more flowers up here. There's one right here, but you could see the flower. I could see that the flower is very big. So this is the seashore mangosteen. It's getting flowers all over it. It's getting ready to do a big bloom. I'm glad because it's the same time uh, as that male red flowered humbromiana over there, even if it's not a humbromiana. I'm pretty sure it is. It just has red flowers. Maybe it's a hybrid of some sort. As leaves do look a little bit different, but I'm sure it's close enough where it could cross with this one and pollinate them. But I'm I'm positive that this female tree is a perfect flower and does not need a male to produce fruit. I'm fairly certain of that. Um, it only flowered one time two years ago, and then we had droughts back to back uh, two seasons and we don't water anything and so it did not flower last year which kind of surprised me because I've never noticed Garcinias to be affected by drought. They have a very long top root here. Um, so keeping your Garcinias in pots is not a good thing. They get too long a tap root. So plants, trees want to be in the soil. Direct sowing Garcinia seeds is like the best way to do it. I have found. And Eventually, once you've applied enough probiotics and prebiotics, uh, manure and hay at the same time, um, uh, then your soil and let your orchard floor grow out, your soil will be good enough so that you, when you plant stuff into them, uh, and you have a lot of diversity of different types of fruit trees, uh, then, then your, your plants will grow. It's taken eight years before our trees really, I mean, look at this Garcinia tree, how healthy that looks. It's just stunning. I make teas out of all these fruit tree leaves 
and uh, I, uh, I've talked about this in past, I went on a vacation to California. I've eaten an organic, uh, vegan, whole foods diet for the last two years. I haven't eaten in a, three years. I haven't eaten in a restaurant. And then I went on vacation and to Santa Barbara and um, for five days. And uh, first meal I had was Mexican food. I love Mexican food at a restaurant. And my stomach was in pain for two days. And um, I had horrible gas from it. Uh, obviously, it was a big microflora die-off in my gut. And uh, I got, came home and I started... Uh, dosing myself with my, you know, 70 different plants a day that I try to eat. And uh, I got hives because I didn't have the biology and the, my indigenous biology built up in my gut. I guess, so I guess it takes uh, uh, two months for your gut co to completely transform into a healthy gut when you've been feeding it with uh, probiotics and prebiotics, so uh, fiber and uh, and uh, fermented food. So for for soil, the prebiotic is the like the hay, the carbon. That's the fiber, and then the probiotic is the manure. And so you feed that uh, daily, every day. It's just like the human body. I do it daily. Manure comes every day, so you have to apply it every day. Plants die every day. Plants shed leaves. Plants shed root exudates every day. It's very important to do small micro inputs of probiotics and prebiotics at the same time every single day, which is what we've been doing for years, and it works. And so, um, but I came back and I, I started uh, eating all this stuff. I wasn't doing my fruit leaf teas because I had been eating mangoes and for some reason I got off my fruit leaf teas. I wasn't making them. I tried to do 45 different leaves at least in my teas. I mix them all together. I mix weeds. I mix a pine needle. I mix just one leaf of each. I don't use uh, plants that I know have high calcium oxalate or toxic, but fruit leaf generally is safe and you can look them up. Please consult with your doctor. I'm not a doctor. I'm just telling you my experience. This is not medical advice. This is my experience. So when I came home and started eating my plant-based diet, a clean plant-based diet, all of a sudden I was allergic to bread. I was allergic to uh, tomatoes. I was allergic to all this stuff. I got hives all over my body and they would not go away. Uh, my friend Frank, who's a nurse, said, you need to get some antihistamine tea because I didn't want to like uh, start eliminating foods from my diet. And... Um, so I, I started making tea. I'm like, oh, I can make my fruit leaf tea. So I made my fruit leaf tea. And as soon as I had it, uh, they're high in polyphenols. My hives uh, stopped. And I've been doing it ever since. And it's been a, a couple months and I've been fine. And uh, I can't go off them. I went off them for two days because my pots were all being used to make, that I make tea in. Um, yeah, I shouldn't heat the tea up just like you shouldn't heat your compost up, but I do it to, to speed things up because it kills a, a certain amount of biology or uh, uh, phytochemicals, I guess, breaks them down too much. They go up into the air, and um, which is the case with thermophilic compost. And um, so you should do a sun, 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 sun tea, but I, I, I almost boil it and then... Um, uh, so I, 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 I ran out and I started getting hives, itching. I didn't get the hives, but I could tell I was going to start getting them unless I started. So it hadn't, my, my gut bacteria had not, biology, microbiome had not built up enough. I guess it hadn't been two months. Um, because the uh, phytochemicals released from the fruit leaf teas uh, that are made by the plant are polyphenols, which uh, it turns out are the co-catalysts for uh, um, enzymes, which are basically uh, bacterial poop that break down uh, food in your gut. Anyway, this is a male Garcinia hombromiana tree that's getting ready to flower also. Um, you could tell it's going to flower. All the leaf tips are covered. I'm very excited about this. This uh, particular Garcinia has been elusive. Fruit has been elusive to us, but I think 2024 is going to be our year. Anyway, this is Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and this is a video on plant uh, or soil probiotics and prebiotics and how they can um, uh, alleviate uh, a defect. Uh,
adific, adif, ad, ad, adaphic soil stress or so, uh, infl soil inflammation um, through their uh, uh, application in micro uh, amounts daily, year round. If you like this content, please like, share, and subscribe. This is Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. And this is natural farming. Have a excellent day.